So. <laughs> okay, on a serious note, guys, we're going to talk about the pros and cons of moving to Portugal today. At least our preconceived ideas of that, given the research that we've done. So I suppose I'll kick it off. Um, one of the key reasons for moving, as you're probably aware from the intro video, is that we want to live an off-grid lifestyle. And here in the UK, that is extremely difficult to set up. I've looked into it for years. It's just so difficult to buy land. We've looked at so many yeah, different plots Yeah, we've even here. visited pieces of land. Yeah. And the restrictions over here are just... It's just shocking. Crazy. Even if you get a good piece of land, you can't even, like put a temporary structure up or yeah. live in a caravan and if you do there's certain rules like how many months you can stay there out of the year mm. and people watching and inspections and checks so yeah it was in on Clarkson's farm wasn't it that you said that like because we, I was like oh the countryside would be okay because it'd be more quiet and this and that and then like Jeremy Clarkson moves to the, the countryside and he's like everyone knows everyone's business yeah, everyone picks which up which I've on. said before I'm not like yeah. sometimes when you're in a smaller countryside village everyone knows everything and yeah you'd think you'd just be left to your own devices but not not, not so really. much yeah no. um another yeah, reason is the cost of the rent and stuff over here um we're not really in a position to get a mortgage nor do we want to we don't really want to live in you know, the small towns or cities. We don't really want that, but countryside costs too much, aren't they? So Absolutely. Um, it's getting more and more expensive here, especially with, like, cost of living crisis, energy bills, stuff like that. Mm. Um, so... Financially draining, and we all we want is a bit of freedom. We want, we want a healthy, nice living environment. We want greenery around us. We can't afford that here. We want, we want a nice place to raise our future family, don't we? That's yeah. it. We want to live off grid, self sufficiently. We don't want to be in the rat race, and we we spoke about all this in our intro video, didn't we? Yeah. Um. So I mean, I know what my ideas are. I think you've probably got some of your own about the pros and cons, but yeah, some of the pros for me are aside from our, our main goals of like you know off grid lifestyle, building a family, living a healthier life, getting more bang for buck. I've got a few things that I've researched and found that I think are quite quite good pros for moving to Portugal. Um, lower crime rates, lower drug rates. Um, you can homeschool a bit easier out there if you're an expat. There's just so many different reasons. Obviously, the, the housing market is much better. Um, and I believe that the, the lifestyle is a lot healthier in the sense of, you know, Probably like um, everything from working hours through to like the types of food and the lifestyle and whatnot. Sunshine. Yeah, just more freedom. Like we're going to have our own room to just do what we want, our own little projects. Um, eventually we'll move away from the whole working lifestyle in terms of working for other people. At mm. the beginning I'm going to be working for someone, like for the company that I work for. Um but in the long term, we don't want that. And that's what was hard here because we had the choice where if we wanted to keep paying the house, it's like, well, we work more or we get better paid jobs or, you know, and we're just getting into that trap more and more. And once you get into that trap, it's harder to leave it all. So we just decided now is the kind of time instead of stepping up that kind of side of it. Exactly. We wanted to move out of it instead. I want to touch upon my pros for moving to Portugal and a few of the cons. So one of the big pros is, so I did some research the other day and I found out that the top five countries in the world for drug use or for drug addiction, basically like England is number one. And then it's like the US and then it's like other countries that you wouldn't think of. So basically- Which, That's crazy because the UK is so small in comparison. Like, I know, it's like not even the size of that. A, one state And we're very well established here. Yeah. We've got a lot of resources, so you wouldn't really think that. Yeah. Whereas in Portugal, it's um, it's got a really low drug rate. And I believe, this is just my personal belief on it, but they've actually legalised drugs. And I, I think that, now, it's not quite what you think. It's not because, um, it's not because they want to 
invite all the drug users in. It's actually because they want to focus on rehabilitation over criminal prosecution, which is something that Russell Brand, the comedian, actually did a documentary on. And ever since seeing that, I thought, you know what, he's got a really good point. And lo and behold, the, the drug rate is way lower than what it, it ever would be here. I mean, we're the highest in the world for drug addiction per capita, per person sort of thing. So, yeah, it's crazy. Um, so that's one big factor. We want to raise a family and we want to do that in a happy and healthy environment. And doing that here where it's got the, the highest drug rate in the world for drug addiction. And, you know, that's just, yeah, that's, it just makes so much more sense. Yeah. There's hardly any crime out there, which is amazing. Like, you know, compared to here, like, I mean, I come from quite a a rough area in Birmingham, and um, I had to grow up in quite. There's quite a lot of crime where I grew up, so I, I had to sort of deal with that. And if we're going to raise a family, I'd rather do it in a nice place like that. And, yeah. You know, just low crime rates are always <laughs> going to be better, aren't they? Mm-hmm. So. Another thing that we've both been speaking about from the get-go is the housing market, isn't it? Yeah. Which we speak about in our intro video a bit as well. It's just bang for buck. You know, you can you can spend 30,000 euros out there and you can get like probably three or four acres of land, yeah, can't you? Yeah, loads of land. Some kind of building to renovate. Some of the buildings yeah. are good to go. And they've got wells on them and you, they've got electricity hookup ready to go. You obviously have to pay extra for that. Mm. Probably even some of them probably even have sewage ready to go as well, like sewage. And that's transport. just like looking at something cheap. I mean, imagine you're gonna buy a house mm. in the UK. Yeah. This house price we rent, but this house sold for around two hundred and fifty thousand, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So imagine if you've got that budget and you go and spend that over there. Even if you only spent like a hundred grand and then spent the rest like on renovation or even yeah. just buying a huge piece of land and putting planning permission on and building from scratch, like yeah, you could the have potential what you want. is just yeah. you know for some of the you know more some of the older people out there that are probably closer to retirement age, you know maybe you should consider it. Like I, I mean, I'm I'm a young guy, so I, you know I don't have as many things that are commit me to living in the UK per se. But you know it's a much healthier lifestyle out there from the research we've done. Mm. And bang for book, you get so much more. Instead of, you know, staying here with, you know, the asset that you've paid for over so many years, why not actually consider a healthier lifestyle? You know, you like Beth just said, Beth's an architectural technician by trade, aren't you? So you know the ins and outs of, like, planning and different things like that. So the battery died, so we've just had to charge the battery. Because <sighs> yeah. we didn't have another battery charged. So there's a quick spot of lunch and then... Mm -hmm. got back to it one of my ones is the climate and the weather oh, which sounds one, yeah. really like oh i want to be there because it's more sunny but for me it's more when the sun's out i'm more motivated i don't mind getting up earlier like it makes me want to start the day and be like there's probably you know. studies out there that prove I that think there are, yeah. but people get sid syndrome and um, seasonal affective disorder where there's yeah. not enough sunshine and I don't mind the rain and stuff like that, but I just think we'll have more sunny days and mm. just be more motivated to do. I just like doing work yeah. on sunny days. I think another factor is I was homeschooling. I don't know if we touched upon that in the last half just now, but basically I did do some research on it and it's much easier to homeschool your children if you're an expat yeah, in if, Portugal. If you're not, if you're just in Portugal, I think they're quite strict on that you have to go to yeah. school, but... For us, yeah. it'll be okay. And from the research I did, you, if you put your child in for conventional schooling over there, that's it, they have to sort of stay. But if you just start homeschooling, that's that's a different thing. And also, I mean, you could argue that you're travelling around anyway. You could say, well, I spend three months here, three months in Spain, another three mm. months in Italy, let's say. You just say that you're travelling a lot. and Which we may well do. Yeah, we have looked at... And that's another thing. So one of the cons that we talk about is um the residency visa and whatnot because it's it's very specific and it's it's very complicated we found lots of pieces yeah. of different information and we think great that's all going to be good it will all work and then all of a sudden we find something new out and we're like oh 
So either it's changed last minute and then all of a sudden it's this, or it just wasn't clear on the other sites that we were researching. Yeah. And um, yeah, so one of the things that we might do is buy land in the future once we set up in Portugal, like in Spain or somewhere like that. We spoke about it, haven't we? That way, if we do have to do the three months in, three months out, we'll just be going to our place in Spain. Across the border. If we get one. Yeah. And just vice versa. We also, I've got some friends and stuff in Spain. Um, when you grew up, yeah. From when I grew up in Spain when I was young. I was there for a few years, so. Um, and you've got family there as well. Yeah, so. yeah. I mean the 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 thing is we've also got a we're quite lucky that I've got Irish ancestry, um, so the Irish passport and citizenship, you know, will take roughly the same amount of amount of time as the D seven visa, so it's a nice backup for us to have. Yeah. Yeah. Another thing is um another con since we're on to the cons now is um the language barrier. Yeah, I mean. You're going to be really, better off than I'm me. not too worried about it. I've done that before and you kind of once you're in the environment you pick, up, pick yeah. up on things and because i know a bit more spanish some of the things will be similar not all of it because there are quite a few differences but i think yeah i mean yeah i can relate to that from when i was in in the middle east like it, it's speaking arabic when it's when you're immersed in it you, you learn the basic things yeah. basic terms we were speaking about that just the other day weren't we yeah but yeah <clears throat> it's quite daunting to just look at a whole other language though and think, oh, I've got to learn a whole language and, and actually be able to use it practically. But I think if we just take it in chunks and do it a, a bit at a time, it'll be okay. You're quite good at learning languages. Mm, I am. Mm. I think you're better than me. <laughs> On Duolingo at least. Yeah, but that's a language that I know quite a bit about. But mm. yeah, um, Another big con is like, moving our stuff well it is and it isn't because mm. traditionally most people would pay a big chunk of money for that all to be moved it cost us across. thousands to do that though yeah it still will cost us a fair bit but yeah and we're not in that kind of position but we are fortunate that my dad's got like trailers and things like that that we can go over on the ferry load those up and gradually take our things across mm. so we are lucky with that yeah we're, we're very fortunate in the sense that we can do that. Yeah. Um, but also accommodation, so. Yeah, I think that's a bit of a con early on because we have got somewhere set up, but it's just like figuring out how we're gonna live and mm. different things like, can't really remember my reasons for that. Yeah, so um, I think that I think just because it's a bit of an older place with older furniture, it's downsizing a little bit. I think you mentioned as well, like it's a two bedroom place as opposed to a, a three bedroom place that we're in currently. And we've actually really filled our, our current home with a lot of a lot of things. I think like more so <laughs> more so what I'm worried about is like when we move out from the rented accommodation to the land. Hmm. Because early on that's gonna be really basic and yeah, the, the land itself that your dad has, has got now, where we'll be staying and helping him build that up, as, as we mentioned before in the the initial video, um, it's not really set up for living yet, so we're going to be building a cabin, and that should, that should go up relatively quickly, based on the planning so far uh, between us all, but generally speaking, you know, there's going to be no air con, um, there's no roofs on the, the old um, ruins. ruins that are, are currently there. And also there's different factors like electricity hookup and whatnot. So we're going to be staying in some, in like an old townhouse, I believe it is. Yeah, apartment. yeah, to start off. But I think, yeah, I think the con is when we move to the land, we will be living quite basically. I don't know, I don't think it's a con, but when you live in that way, there comes things mm. that are more of a struggle. Yeah. So it'll be very different to here. Yeah, so I think one of the big things will be that your work is so reliant on internet and electricity. Yeah. Like, so if we're living off grid, we have to make sure we've got not just a, a main means of it, but like a backup to a backup. We've got to have like... Yeah. And we, my yeah. work is going to be the main source of income. Yeah. So that's really important. That's the only money we're going to have. We need to be really careful of how we use that money and how we save. But yeah, have it making sure I can work and making sure we've mm. got multiple options for Wi-Fi and stuff 
is really important. Um, I mean, we've got um, we've got like a good thing going with your work because the cost of living out there, you your wages almost almost cover both of us for minimum wage out there, and that's yeah. crazy to think that. And that's part time. That's part time. So if if there's people out there who are watching this and you're thinking to yourself, oh, you know, I could do that. Like, yeah, you could do that. The only thing you'll struggle with is like a residency visa and, and whatnot, or it's the longer term things. Obviously, post Brexit, it's quite hard to actually get residency or so citizenship we'll, for the EU. So. We'll briefly touch on this now. Mm. For this whole time, we've been looking at the D7 visa and we thought, oh, it's like this much you have to be earning. I think it's around €750 Euros a month. And we just thought that was income, mm. so we thought that would be fine. Um, but actually now um, we've looked into it more and we found out that it's actually passive income so that changes things quite a lot it's not saying that we can't do it because we do have some things in the background and stuff that yeah. could work towards that but it's just not what we initially thought yeah. and I mean like I say we've got the <laughs> my, my pending Irish citizenship once I put the application in that should you know that takes up to two years with, with the waiting time at the moment so generally speaking a d7 visa take can take up to two years as well well the re some of the research well, doesn't suggest that online it kind of says it can be as fast as like up to 10 weeks or something like that yeah but people that we've watched have said theirs have taken over two years so i don't know that's we're just talking about the application though like i'm talking about that other couple that we watched and they said that Forget it. Once that once they got once they got it, they had to keep going to the the passport office at the border or something to get it stamped, or something like that. A, a local authority had to stamp it for up to two years until they could become permanent residents. Yeah, it's because it's a residency it's quite complicated visa. and it's limited it's, online the information that you get. So we're pulling our information from bits of YouTube mm. and, but we're going to keep updating you as we find things out and yeah. we go through these processes. Things are always evolving and changing <coughs> at the minute. Yeah. Um, another big con for me is like travel because like family is really important to both of us and we are going to want to see them but mm. it's awkward keep travelling back all the time and yeah because initially we've got the three months on three months off we don't really want to be coming all the way back to the UK because it but you know it's easier for us to go and stay in Spain and it's going to be a lot nicer because also if we come back for three months to the UK it's really expensive to live here for three months yeah unless we're staying with family and that's uncomfortable. We would rather, especially in the off-peak time, so we've worked it so that we're going to be going to Portugal around about summertime when it's peak rates, staying in your dad's place for three months and then we're going to go across the border to either Spain or France, who knows, maybe another European country and we're going to stay there for three months. Well, maybe. It's not set in stone yet, is it? Well, we don't it's know about the... thought. Well, if we... Unless we get the residency... Yeah. Things sorted and then we would stay as long as we we want of course but i think um, i'm more like leaning towards like i want to pop back here and there but it's all money dependent isn't it it's all money dependent yeah like it would be nice to be able to visit family and stuff keeping on the topic of that and also we've got appointments over here and stuff yeah that yeah. we've got to keep and mm. so i think that kind of mostly covers our pros and cons have you anything else no, I think that's it really, yeah. So there's lots of mixed things, but ultimately, if we stay here, the lifestyle we would have to have would be to work more. Mm. Towards goals that we don't really aspire for anyway, we don't really want yeah. to... We'll be working yeah. to pay for this house, this life, or another house, but it's not what we want. We want land, we want our own like self-sufficient kind of setter. Mm. And I actually ultimately want to like design and build our own house from scratch, which you kind of are interested yeah, in yeah, too. Yeah, absolutely. So we want to build our own thing, and that's just not. It would just cost so much here. That's it. It's just too much. Um, it it's not in line with our, our values, and yeah, that that's it. That's just the bottom line. You know, that's the one thing I've found up to now is that if if it's not in line with my values, then I don't really want to pursue it because. No amount of money in the world will make up for what's actually truly going to make me happy. And yeah. I think we're both on the same sort of path, so it makes it a lot easier. 
because mm. otherwise we wouldn't be doing it, would we? No. <laughs> Obviously, we've mentioned loads of other videos that we're going to cover, um, or that we may have already covered on the mm. channel. Um, but yeah. anyway, I hope you like this video, and please like yeah. and subscribe if you are interested. So yeah, thanks for watching, and we'll see yeah. you in the next one. Thanks, guys.